What's your favorite scary movie? In this franchise, because we're going to rank them from worst to best, starting right now. Let's go. What's up, everybody? I am Kevin. Welcome back to Cinema Sermons. And Scream 6 has just hit theaters, so I'm going to go ahead and give you my ranking of the entire Scream franchise from worst to best. But before we hit the top three, I will take a very quick break give a quick little sermon. If you are not a Christian and you want to go ahead and skip ahead to the end and or skip ahead to the, the top three and see what those are, please feel free to do so. But without any further ado, let's jump into this franchise. And truthfully, this is one of the most consistent franchises in slasher history. Most slasher franchises are actually just really not good. Scream is, is fairly consistent and, and putting out quality stuff, except for the top two. Bottom two. Bottom of the list. Top the worst two. <laughs> anyway, so coming in last place for me at number six is probably going to be a controversial pick, but Scream 5. I know a lot of people really liked this movie. I just did not. I, I thought it was too contrived. You're trying way too hard to go back to the original film. And if I just want to watch the original film, I'm going to watch the original film. And everything they talked about from Billy Loomis, the oversaturation of the Billy Loomis character. If I want to watch a movie with Billy Loomis in it, I'm going to watch the original Scream. I wanted something different and I get the meta references of the, the requels and things like that, but it was just, it just didn't work for me on any level. Um, I pegged one of the ghost faces right away. Um, and then the, the, the other reveal was very lackluster. I'm like, how does a five foot woman who's a hundred pounds throw David Arquette around like he's nothing. Like it just doesn't work. So it was a very lackluster movie for me. The the reveals weren't great. The motives weren't great in my opinion. The toxic fandom and all that. It just, nothing about Scream 5 worked for me. And the new characters we introduced to, who I actually like a lot better in Scream 6, it's weird, you'll see that later. When they're introduced in Scream 5, I just don't care about any of these characters. I don't like them. I'm only there to see Dewey, Gale, and of course, Nev Campbell as Sydney. It just didn't work for me, so bottom of my list, Scream 5. Coming in fifth place is Scream 3. Now this is usually most people's last on the list, and I completely understand why. The, the script had to be rewritten in production because Columbine happened and the shootings happened, which was very, very sensitive at the time, and the script was gonna be something along those lines. So they took a different direction, it's a new setting, it just didn't work for me. The motives of the killer and getting back to, oh, it's Sydney's half brother that she didn't know she had. And the sexual perversion of it was way too dark. I did not like it, but granted it's exposing things that are actually going on in Hollywood and in a post Me Too era, we know that these things are actually going on. It was just very uncomfortable. So if I wanna sit down and watch a movie and have two hours of escapism, this was very uncomfortable to watch. Uh, a lot of the humor didn't land. It was a little too over the top humor campy. It just didn't work for me and as it didn't work for most people. But again, it's still a fairly enjoyable film, especially compared to other, other horror franchises. But coming in at number five for me is Scream 3. Okay, everything from here on out, I actually thoroughly enjoy these movies and I think they're all really good. So if you don't agree with the ranking, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know your ranking. But again, the rest of these movies, I actually really like and they all think they're pretty good. And for the most part, three of the next four could probably be pretty interchanged depending on which one I just watched. And coming in at number three and four, these two are pretty tied for me. They're, they're right there. It's probably neck and neck and I like different ones for different reasons. But for me, I'm probably gonna have to go with Scream 4. And this was a really good one in the franchise. When it came out, it came out when I was in high school. So it was the first one that I was actually able to go see and I really enjoyed the movie. It was cool to see these characters that we already knew about, that we enjoyed, and truthfully, at that point, I didn't really know the characters and enjoy them. I knew of them, like I knew the, I knew the twist ending even before I ever saw the original movie, but this was really my introduction to the Scream franchise, truthfully, and it was a pretty good movie. Seeing how Jill wanted to become the new Sydney was a really good motive for me, and I thought that worked, and how she wanted to devise this plan the world just heard about what happened, but with us, they're gonna see it. It's gonna be a worldwide sensation. Where I thought it fell a little bit flat is again, Emma Roberts is not a big person, 
and the ghost face killer is clearly a large male in the movies and it, it just didn't work for me so it's like oh putting on a costume makes you a foot and a half taller and gives you a hundred extra pounds of weight it just didn't work for me and then the the guy who is the other killer in scream 4 same thing he's, he's a little guy so the the reveals just didn't work for me i'm like logic and reason doesn't really make sense as the franchise went along i was like all right i just gotta abandon all those but it it excelled in some ways where it was great to see these characters it was great to see uh them try to bring in this new cast of characters and again this was my introduction to the franchise looking back at it now i'm like okay i want to try to get away from that first movie so much because if i just wanted to be obsessed with the first movie i'm just gonna watch the first movie but i get that's when the remakes and everything were coming out so they want to do a meta commentary on that i thought the new characters were all pretty good but it didn't work for me in the reveal the reveal of the killers is what we're all there for it's the murder mystery who done it and though the motive was cool it brought me down a little bit. But I thought after the killers were revealed and they find out that Sydney's still alive in the hospital and Jill and Sydney fight in the hospital, that scene was really cool. I really enjoyed that. So anyway, coming in at number four is Scream 4, right? Yeah, four, Scream 4, yeah, ha, <laughs> yeah. Before I give you my top three, I wanna go ahead and take a break and give you a quick sermon. So if you're not a Christian and you don't wanna hear what I have to say, please feel free to skip ahead. But if you are a Christian, we're gonna go ahead and jump into that right now. So in the Scream films, each time the killer or killers is revealed to be someone that the people know. There's a lot of lying and a lot of deception that goes into becoming the ghost face killer. And I wanted to talk about deception real quick. So we know that the enemy can deceive us. We know that the enemy can tempt us. But a lot of times deception comes from within us. The Bible says that the human heart above all things is deceitful and that we're not to trust our own heart. I also think it's very interesting that the scriptures say, do not allow yourselves to be deceived as if we almost want it. Like we're, we're hoping to get deceived. So then that way we can relinquish a little bit of accountability for what we've done. Be like, oh, well I was deceived. I didn't know I was really doing that. When in your heart, you know that you're right or you know that it's wrong, you just wanna do it anyway. So you allow yourself to be deceived. Even in James, I believe it is, the scriptures are telling us that don't say God is tempting you because you're being tempted by the darkness within your own heart. So we allow ourselves to be deceived because we wanna give in to the darknesses within our own heart. So I think it's important for us as Christians to live by what the Proverbs say, above all else, guard your heart for from it flows all things that you do. So guard your heart, do not allow yourselves to fall into temptation, do not allow yourselves to be deceived, to give in to this temptation that you actually really wanna do. Guard your heart, guard against temptation, and guard against deception from yourself because people are gonna to try to deceive you, you just gotta be on your toes, you gotta be wise, you gotta, unfortunately that's just, a, a, you learn it as you go kind of a thing of learning uh, who's trying to deceive you, who's on your side, who's really not. The enemy's gonna to continue to try to deceive you, but I wanna guard you against deception from yourself. And I'm talking to me just as much as I'm talking to you. All I do is repeat the words that someone else wrote, right? I'm, I struggle just as much with sin as anyone else. I just repeat the words of the Bible, that's all I do. Let us together guard our hearts, as the Proverbs say, for from it flows all things we do. Let's listen to wisdom and not put trust in ourselves, not trust in our own understanding, and understand that our hearts can be deceitful and probably will deceive us into doing something bad, which as we see in the Scream movies, always goes bad. All right, and now that that is over, let's get back to the ranking. Coming in at number three for me, probably gonna be a controversial pick for some people, but is the new kid on the block, Scream 6. I was thoroughly impressed with this movie because I had zero expectations. I did not want to go see this movie at all. The only reason I did it is so I could put out this video here to try to get views and capitalize on everyone talking about Scream right now. That's a really, because Scream 5 just did not work for me. For some reason, I don't know if it was better writing, I don't know if it was better chemistry with the characters because the actors got to know each other better. I don't know what it was. The core four, four, four. The, the core four characters in this movie worked so much better for me than they did in the last movie. I thought their chemistry was great. I thought the way they interacted seemed a little more natural, a little more organic, and they were just more enjoyable as characters. So yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed the, the, the core four in this movie. I thought to see Kirby come back from Scream 4, that worked for me and it was cool because like I said, I was in high school when that movie came out. So she's playing a senior in high school while I'm a senior in high school. So to see her as, as an adult with a career, as I'm an adult with a career, that's just cool. I've never grown up with a character. I never thought it would be Kirby from Scream 4, 
but I'm seeing myself grow up with a character and in different stages of life, and that's pretty cool. I thought the reveal was better. There's still a part where I have to suspend my disbelief, but I've gotten used to that in this franchise at this point. So I kind of knew what I was getting into. I was like, yeah, there's gonna be a reveal and it's probably gonna not make any logical sense. And to an extent, that's true. I don't wanna get into spoiler territory if you've not seen the movie, but this reveal worked better for me than the other previous few review reveals have. And it makes more sense. Um, this movie is far from perfect. A lot of things happen to people where like, you would die. There's no way that you would just walk that off. But again, I've learned to dis uh, I've learned to suspend my disbelief with these films. So I had no expectations going in. I knew that it was gonna be over the top. There's gonna be a lot of things that didn't make sense logically. So maybe it's just recency bias, right? I'll re-rank this when they put out Scream 7 and we'll see if it's the same ranking. But for right now, this movie worked pretty well for me and I'm actually pretty shocked by it. If you're able to turn your brain off and just enjoy it, man, I actually highly recommend Scream 6. So Scream 6 comes in at number three for me. Down to the final two. By process of elimination, you know what's coming. And I think this isn't really gonna shock anybody what the number one is. So coming in at the number two spot is Scream 2. I really liked leaving the location of Woodsboro. I really liked going into the college setting. And we're following these characters that we really love now. I think the, the, the core four in this movie, I like better than the core four in Scream 6. That's why Scream 2 works better for me is because I love Nev Campbell as Sidney Prescott, I love Dewey, I love Gail Weathers, and I love, uh, Randy, Randy, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot about Randy. Yeah, that's his name, Randy. To see those four characters back worked so much better for me. It has that 90s feel, which works for me because I was a kid in the 90s. So I was eight years old when Scream 2 came out. I remember the posters, I remember the trailer. I, I wasn't allowed to see it, obviously, but I remember this movie coming out. So there is a little bit of nostalgia there. And actually, I've been watching the movie. I really enjoyed Tilly, Timothy Oliphant as an actor. I really enjoyed him as the ghost face in this movie. Billy Loomis's mom didn't really work for me as well, um, but it was more believable because this was right after the first movie. So again, I want, I want the franchise to break away from that first movie and from Billy Loomis and from Stu Campbell, unless he comes back. And it just seems like we just can't do that. So, but, this movie did it better. And I thought it was a good continuation. I love the meta commentary on sequels where they're walking like, oh, sequels suck and sequels are never good. That too? Who'd wanna do that? Sequels suck. No way. I thought that worked so well. For me, number two is Scream 2. But coming in at number one, to no one's surprise, is the movie that revolutionized and revamped the slasher genre and in no exaggerated way, changed the face of horror. <laughs> Coming in at number one, the 1996 film, Scream. Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson came together and created a horror icon within itself, making fun of horror icons. They reference A Nightmare on Elm Street, which was Wes Craven's uh, baby. They reference Halloween. They reference uh, Friday the 13th. They reference all these movies and they take these tropes that become tiresome and annoying and they flip it on its head and they work within these rules so the characters know they're in a slasher movie. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. The characters know they're in a slasher movie. Randy even goes through his rules of being in a slasher. Nev Campbell is fantastic as Sidney Prescott, one of my absolute final girls, and you will have a ranking at some point of my top 10 final girls. Expect Sidney Prescott to be pretty high. Pretty, pretty high up. She's smart, she's resourceful, she's strong, she's a fighter. Sydney Prescott is everything that you want in a final girl, and this is our introduction to her, and she just carries out that strength throughout the franchise. Sydney is as cool as it gets. Courtney Cox does an amazing job as Gail Weathers. She's just the worst person ever, but she brings a certain charm to it. And David Arquette as Dewey is so awesome, man. He's just a fan favorite. The way it's able to blend the horror and the comedy together is fantastic, man. I, I really enjoy that first movie. I was surprised at how good it was because I knew the twist ending before I saw the movie, and then I see the movie, and I'm still affected by the twist ending. That's how effective this movie was. Scream revolutionized the, the slasher genre when it was dying and on its way out and revamped a whole subgenre of that Scream style of movies. And now here we are in 2023 talking about a movie that is a continuation of a franchise that began in 1996 and that is all due to that original movie so without a doubt coming in at number one 
is Scream. So there you have it. That is my ranking of all six Scream films. Let me know down in the comments what your ranking is from worst to best. What is your favorite Scream film? Do you not like Scream films? Do you not think that Christians can watch scary movies at all? That is a conversation I would really love for us to get into. Be respectful about it because that is a secondary issue. Let us not speak where the Bible has not spoken. However, I do think there's some wisdom to be taken from both sides of the argument, and I would love to open up that conversation. Again, I hope that this is just some fun, that we get to enjoy this. Be respectful down in the comments, please, and just know that I love you, Jesus loves you, that's our story, and we're sticking to it. See you guys.